Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome uh, from quarantine here at Northern Kentucky University. Um, today, we're uh, extremely lucky, lucky to have Angie Shore with us, who is, and I've said before, the uh, most successful uh, Broadway actor we've ever had come out of Northern Kentucky University, and we've had a lot of successful people. So uh, this is exciting. And I'm one of the lucky people who have seen her perform before, and uh, hopefully everyone will, because uh, it, it's hard to take your eyes off of her. As a matter of fact, at it's something so nice. rotten, <laughs> at something rotten, uh, my uh, at the time teenage son was with me, uh, and we got to see Angie in the lobby after she uh, performed, and he's still in love. He is? Yes, I was 22, uh, just so you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love those stories. Yes. You, like the old people. I'm so happy to be here. Like, I'm just going to be on a stage. Oh, great to have you. And this is the stage that I did my first book show. Wow. And what was it? Chicago. Chicago. Yes. Um, and I, back, back in the covered wagon days when I was here, <laughs> um, we they had separate dancers. So, so I didn't get to be a cell block girl. We did dancers, okay. and then six more singer actresses were the cell block girls. Really? Yeah, and the same with Cinderella, which I did here. I was in the dancer, you know, one of the dancers, and then a premiere of Joe's Bar um, that Joe Conker was talking about directing. And so, I think Jack Wong directed Cinderella. That's yeah, right. In Chicago. That's right. And so uh, your path is very interesting. Well, first of all. I have, just nice I have to do it just because, right. yes, because <laughs> this is this is just Broadway. Uh, this doesn't include the entire career. This is just Broadway, which right now our student uh, eyes are uh, as big as sausage. The producers, something rotten, big fish, catch me if you can, young Frankenstein, and get your gun, Chicago, Sunset Boulevard, crazy for you, the real Will Rogers Follies. Did I leave out any of your? My most recent, the prom. And the prom. Wow. And that's one of your favorites right now. So amazing. 11. I thought it was going to be a lucky one, but it only lasted for 10 months. But oh. it, was, uh, it was quite something. And the story will still be out there because they're doing a Netflix movie. That's right. Okay. So you're a student. But when did you start to dance and sing before you ever came to you? How, how old were you when that started? I was mainly a dancer. Okay. From five years old to till I came here okay. and this is when and I wish I would have known earlier but nobody my parents didn't really know nobody knew to teach me okay. to start singing right when I was dancing right. so I mainly came here as a dancer and I got a little scholarship and then this school is where I started to speak and sing and act and you know do all, do all the other things um, this is where I learned that I would have to do that. Wow. But I mainly was a dancer from yeah five years old until I got here. And like Linda Crumey and Jamie Green, but the, the ballet masters, masters and mistresses, uh, they really helped me. Because even though I had taken ballet, um, it, it, I basically was half hour ballet, half hour tap, half hour jazz at Ziegler Studio of Dance, which is where I got my foundation okay. and my style, I say. Um, Bobby Ziegler and Nancy Ziegler gave me all of that. And then Linda and Jamie kind of helped me figure out the ballet, just I better technique. Um, but mainly the singing and the acting started right here. <laughs> right here on the stage. <laughs> now, uh, Linda Kruby and Jane Green uh, were dance teachers for many, many years here at North Kentucky mm -hmm. Uh And they really, uh, especially uh, Linda kind of kicked it off, and Jane Green really, really took it to uh, Establishing our dance program, uh, and uh, and now it's handed over to Tracy Long. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Hi, Tracy. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So you come here, you start to learn, and then what happens? Well, I was here for three years, okay. and in the summers I would go to theme parks. I think I did Bush Gardens a couple summers. Okay. One summer I got to do. Now remind me if it was dinner theater or what? It was in the black box. Yes. Was Summer it dinner? dinner? Still, we still okay, have. Okay, right. It was so much fun. And that's where Jack Wan gave me my first role. And I got to play Lois Lane and Kissy Kate. Wow. And it was the first time. And if you, that role is a little of everything. A little singing, a little dancing, a little acting, sure. which is kind of what I do. I'm not a park and barker. 
I got to, I got to move. I got to, you know, okay. so kiss me. Kate was totally that rock and roll for me. And I think that's where I really got bit by the bug because it was just so much fun to get to do that. And it's also the first time I went up on lyrics. <laughs> I remember, yes. If you know, uh, but I'm always true to you, darling, in my fashion. It's a lot of lyrics, a lot of, well, there's mm -hmm. a lot of known as text. <laughs> and I just went up on whatever the next thing, and I just went da 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 da. I think it was the first time I had to sort of improv and like come up with something, and I was so vivid in my memory, and it was many 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 years ago. But um, so then I got a college program at Disney. It was supposed to be a college program, and I left because I thought I was going to get college credit. Right. It's called Epcot Entertainment of the Arts or something. Yes. So we did the castle show in front of the castle and we got paid in sort of classes. Well, that's where I actually got to meet Lee Murray Reams, who's also from my dance studio, wow. who we also did the producers together years, years later. He came down and taught the opening of 42nd Street. Okay. But what happened is I think it started costing too much money to do that, so they just turned us professional. So basically, I didn't get any college credits, but I just kept working. And that's kind of what happened. So you went from Disney to New York? I went from Disney to Showgirl in Atlantic City to a Showgirl in Japan, back to open up MGM Studios at Disney. Right. Then to New York. Right. Now, this is really weird. I was there when Disney and MGM Studios opened because I was writing television. Did we talk about this? I think we did. <laughs> so that might have been the conversation we Wait, had so you were. At MGM, I came in when the studios opened in Studio Three. We were doing uh, television uh, from Earth to Moon. I didn't Children believe Earth. that. <laughs> yeah, you were right. Yeah. Tap TV moving. Well, just... now they now they've closed it all. In right. The yeah. So where the Hollywood Bowl? They moved the Hollywood Bowl now. Yeah. That's where we did Disney Girls. I did the Big Crazy Show. They were all at MGM Studios, and that's where I got the call to move to New York because this is why I always say. You never know who you're working with, so always be kind. <laughs> yes. Because DJ Salisbury, who I was doing, the, who I did the Diamond Horseshoe with in Adventureland at, at Disney, um, was my dance partner at one point, and he was a PA on the Little Rogers Follies. And that show, you all are too young to know it probably, but it was about 12 or 14 women who Tommy Toon wanted to be over by eight. We weren't all over by eight, but one of the prerequisites was to be over five eight. So I had and the dance was to And that, so I had that beat. I was I'm almost five eleven. So I drew DJ calling me on a landline down at the entertainment okay. office. Right. right, landline. Right. Someone that's phones with cords. <laughs> someone handed me a pink piece of paper that said DJ Salisbury called you. So I called him on my landline and he said, I think you should come up and audition for this show because you're perfect for it. And let's see. I don't know how I got the balls to do this, but I said, I'm not sure they're going to like what I look like, so I'm going to send some tapes. So I sent some VHS tapes that I sort of spliced myself. Right. Like, how do you do it back then? That's like, right. tape. You have to have multiple machines. Exactly. To turn them on and off. I don't know how I did it, but I did. And I sent a couple headshots, and, you know, maybe a photo of me with a microphone with Pluto behind me or something, <laughs> and my Disney girl wig. Like, it was just nuts. Um, and I did. I sent a VHS tape, and at the time, I, I was doing body walkovers in the Can Can show. I did, like I said, singing with, uh, and we were lip syncing mm -hmm. with, uh, you know, Tigger behind me or something. And I sent it off. So it was every little thing I was doing on property down there. And uh, they said, absolutely, come up. So I was, I don't know what, I just was like, what if they don't like what I look like? I'm not going to spend the money to do it. And so I did. And I blew up an audition on the stage wow. in the Nederlander Theater where they were setting, they were workshopping. Okay. Because Will Rogers is the whole set is steps. Mm -hmm. So they couldn't do it in a, in a studio like we would now. And so I auditioned on the lunch break of their workshop day, like five or six of us on the stage for Cy Coleman. And I sang a Cy Coleman song, which I didn't know it was his song on the other side of the track. He was like, that's my song. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and Tommy Toon, and uh, like, like there was well, Patty Gebeck, all of his assistants, Jeff Kaplan. And lo and behold, my friends now, Jerry Mitchell, who's a big director, Katie Huffman, who was nominated for several Tonys and won them, Tony for the producers, 
were on the lunch break all the way up in the mezzanine watching the audition. <laughs> and boy, would I have been nervous had I known them and known they were there, right? But I did. I we did the little jokey thing, I sang, and then I flew back to Orlando, went back into my Disney shows, and about two weeks later, they called me on my landline on my. Uh, you put, what do you tape recorder? <laughs> right, right. The answering machine. Answering machine. Yo, good old answering machine. It was so archaic, I couldn't remember the name of it. <laughs> um, and I got the job, and I they, I got to give a two weeks notice or whatever it was at Disney, Ronnie Rodriguez, and um, I moved to New York. I actually put a down payment on a house in Orlando. I was like, just going to live there. Right. Because right. I did every show on property. You had your career. It's a great there. company. I was the dance captain of every show. Ronnie would call me like, we need some dancers for this. And I sort of enjoyed kind of having my hands mm -hmm. in all those things. Um, but then something else happened. So now it's about three decades later. Mm -hmm. And it took three decades in a pandemic to end my career. <laughs> You're welcome. Well, we'll be starting up soon. You're welcome. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, but that's it. And then, then we have our the finishing of my NKU. The, all right. Okay. So you, you. Did, you did not get your degree early on, so you left after three years, and then uh, we met each other again uh, years later. Yes. And you got your degree. And I'm trying to think of what. Let's see, I'm on, I, I've done 11 Broadway shows. I think I was on maybe my sixth or seventh Probably when right. I got my degree. It was right before Catch Me, I think. Yes. yes. Was it? Yes. Before. You might have been involved in it. Yeah. Yes. Well, yes. I was just like prom. I was involved in Catch Me for about seven yes. years. Yes, yes, that's so what I mean. So I probably in the middle was of coming, it. Yeah. yeah. So yes, uh, Ken helped me finish my degree. And I sometimes wonder if I had stayed that last year. You know, I don't really regret it, but I go, maybe I would have gotten maybe another juicy part or two, and maybe, or just being here. But then I go, I guess that was my path because I. It, it, it's a magical path. I, I, mean, I just sort of, I call it scrappy Angie. I just sort of took <laughs> what came to me, right. you know? And like I said, at the same time going, you know what? I'm not good enough to move to New York. I'm going to stay in Orlando, stay in Orlando and work at this great corporation mm -hmm. um, because I knew so many friends of mine that were so much more talented than me that weren't doing stuff in New York. So I was like, I'd rather be where the work is. Sure. And, and that's a good point. I, I mean, also with your college career, you felt at that time it was time to go someplace else. And not everybody always finishes college in the, in the four year term. Yeah. Uh, and as a matter of fact, when we spoke, I was like, well, why didn't you just finish the degree? Uh, you were so close anyway. Yes. Uh, and to have you as an official alum would be magical for us. So. Ken Jones, happily and thankfully, and I'm so grateful to him for helping me do that. And my fa late father, his education was very important to him. And he never was mad that I didn't finish right. because he liked, he, he came down to Disney a thousand times. Sure. And, uh, came to New York at that time, he would travel still. And um, so before he passed, I got to, he, oh, he got he to it. see my diploma. Oh, that's fantastic. Summa cum laude or something, I don't know. And I'm not smart at all, but I worked hard. <laughs> yes, from the Broadway shows, we can tell that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, well, so I, I'm I, very I, grateful to you and to engaging for have, making oh, that it, I mean, you did it. We were just, we were just here to help. And, it, it goes to show you that even through these hard times, which a lot of students uh, took a break because of COVID, uh, college changed quite a bit. No yeah. shows, things like that. That that it means you keep come back. You, you know, we're always here. We're always your family. Uh, NKU waiting, arms open for you to come back yes. on the stage. And uh, KU, and I love driving here, and I just have so many memories. Of, and even though it's so different, the entrance entrances and exits, yeah. and none of the buildings. I couldn't find anything, but. I do, it, it just brings a little tingle. It's like, uh, this was a great time. Good, I'm glad it was. And a growing time for me because I was just a dancer. Well, that's the, that's what I didn't know, is that you were not a singer and actress. No. I, thought, I thought you were born that way. Uh, no, singing, I was dancing. not. And I, I kick myself for not. And it's also, you know, nowadays, you have the social media, people can... Google anything, mm -hmm. you can imitate, you can watch. Sure. I didn't have that. 
You know what I mean? And even once I moved to New York, you know, like to get a get a sheet music, you had to go to Colony and get those hard copy. That's right. You know, nowadays you can find anything. And so I feel like it's just everyone's just better, you know. And I think I was kind of that last generation that kind of just got slipped by with just being mediocre at everything, but having a package and knowing what I am. Yes. Except I have seen her. And you dance circles around people. I mean, you're amazing. You, your voice is spectacular. That's so On stage, I, you know, I just sat there with saucers at something rotten. And and I was just, I don't say just in the chorus because I love the chorus. And I would, as long as my body holds up, I will do whatever I can for the rest of my life. Um, but I just love it so much, you know. And I think it shows. And that, you know, that brings me to a point uh, to talk about is, how do you, what do you, what do you, there were a lot of people who, who took their path, who went to Disney, who, who probably were dancing and singing their whole lives. Uh, there were a lot of people who probably went to New York and maybe got a lot of the tall job. women. Yeah. I got up there. I should have been a casting director. Right. <laughs> I'd be making some money, you know, that what I was like, I got all those tall women up there yeah. because I knew them and I knew what Will Rogers needed. So right. I did get a lot of women. But there's something you have that other people don't. Uh, what, do you, what do you think that is? What do you think has led to your success? Just being passionate and being grateful to work and do what I love and be paid to do what I love. Um, I don't know. I don't know where what, what it is and where it comes from. I've been fortunate enough to work with very big directors and choreographers that have taken me under their wing. Jerry Mitchell from the first day of Will Rogers rehearsal took me under his wing. We are still great friends. I mean, he only hired me to do Catch Me If You Can. He hasn't hired me to do a lot of things, <laughs> but uh, we're good friends. Um, and then Ace Nicola, of course, Susan Stroman is re responsible wow. for over half of my career. I, we fell in love during Crazy For You. I auditioned for the first national tour, and I think I've done nine different productions with her, including The Merry Widow at the Met, Big Fish, Out of Town, Broadway. Crazy for you, First National Broadway. Um, uh, what else? Are they? Oh, Young producers? Frankenstein and the producers. Oh, my big. The producers. The producers. Is. My six-year-long the yes. producers run. Which, that's which do you think that's what you're most known for? Is up until the prom, probably up right. until Angie and the prom. Right. Uh, but that was one of my. That was one of the. Up uh, prom was one of the greatest things because someone wrote a part for me. The producers. From top to bottom, we knew it was a hit, and that never happened. And it was incredible, and it was fun, and it barely changed because it was just so brilliant from the beginning. Sure. And I we did the out of town in Chicago. We came right into my favorite theater, the St. James, um, and it was just an incredible time. We won, we won the most Tonys, and then about a year and a half or a couple years into it, uh, I was the second cover for Ula, and I got to go on. Um, and this is kind of, I don't want to bore you guys with my blah, 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 but this is kind of a good story because it just reminds you that people are going to knock you down. People are going to tell you that you're not good enough. People are going to be negative and you have to know what you are. So I'm the second cover for Ula. I was told I would never go on. I couldn't sing it in Katie's key. She's got a really, really high cover. Okay. And I practiced it. I could do it when I wasn't dancing, but I couldn't, I didn't have the breath control, you know, just I'm not a good enough singer. And I said to Patrick Brady, Patrick S. Brady, I said, uh, I know I'm funny. I know I, I looked the part, Ula was a tall blonde, not that they couldn't just with me, but they did. And I said, uh, can you feel my own key? And he did. And it uh, was just a half a step lower. But for whatever reason, it fit better in my voice. Sure. And I could do it because if you know Ula, if you know the producers, she just got to do get it, get it, all these little things. And even though it's not a lot of movement, you're sure. you're precise and you're holding your breath. And then you're you know. So it was just figuring out. I used to do the back walk over off my bed, singing the note, just trying to you know rehearse it. But anyway, he, they gave me my own key, and thank God they did because on I'm saying it's probably about a year and a half into the production, maybe two years. I know it was a Valentine's Day. On a two-show day, I got I went on the second show. 
and I, I had maybe two costumes that wore all eight. And I rehearsed with Matthew Broderick right before the show. We did, we did that face, dance mm -hmm. okay. And that's all. I had a little bit of rehearsal and whatever. So thank God I had my own key. Thank God it went well. And I got to go on like six more times that week. Mm -hmm. And then they asked me to do the first national. And then I did the last four years as Ula on Broadway. But they told me I would never go on. Wow. So I, you know, it panned out yeah. the way it is, and, and rightfully so. If I'm not good enough, I get it, <laughs> right? But somehow I just found the power in myself. And listen, I am not a confident, I'm not a very confident person. <laughs> um, I, like about myself. I mean, like I'm, I'm fun and boisterous and over the top, but I'm just saying I wouldn't, I wouldn't be the first person to do that. Yes, I do. But for some reason, I just knew that I was good okay. at certain things, and I just needed a little help. Oh, okay. So you did this that's for, the story for today. You did this for four years after that. How how do you do that? How do you go in there that many times for four years, and how many times thing. a week? And do the same thing over yeah. and over. Yeah. Eight shows a week. And how do you take care of yourself? I mean, you're dancing, you're singing, you have to take care of yourself. What 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 is your what, for somebody who goes on Broadway and, and gets into a show? We tend to think, oh my, they just are breaking champagne bottles out yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and going to these parties, but you're not. You're taking care of yourself. No, I, uh, in fact, when I did the first national tour of Hula, it was my first, I had understudied roles, but it was my first taking a role on the road, you know. Okay. And I would only go out on Sunday nights. I was so good. I, and and uh, I'm a social person, I like being social, but I wanted to make sure that I kept my sure. voice good and you know, did what they asked me to do and was the leading lady of that show. And so I was really good. And then the same when you're on Broadway, you just can't go out and talk over music and talk. I can't. Right. Some people have the cords of steel and can't. But for me, I have to really watch because I, as you can tell, I get energized and I'm talking over people and then they're shot. So you just have to be, maintain that. I take, I still take in my Zoom land, my friend Deb Roche teaches a, um, advanced jazz class that I take it's a great warm up. So you still take I do lessons? I do four wow. times four times a week. Okay. My friend Deb Deb Roche, uh, she teaches at BBC Broadway Dance Center and it sets and we do it on Zoom now, but it keeps me moving and um, hopefully, you know, when this thing opens up again, like uh, when we're I'm two years older, like who knows when it's gonna open up. But it's just part of who I am. So I did that even during the prom. Still, okay. Deb Roche okay. in person. That was we weren't in COVID yet. Mm -hmm. And um, and I I do like vocal co coachings and stuff. If I have auditions, I don't really audition that much anymore. But uh, I just try to keep up on it. And I'm a little been a little uninspired in this time. I will admit. At first, I was like trying to sing every day. Now I'm just very uninspired. I'm trying to. I'm trying to figure it out. I think a lot of that's happened to a lot of people. Us, like for, in the early days of COVID, everybody, we were still taking lessons and coming yeah. up with creative ideas, doing things on Zoom, and now people are just tired. Uh, and so it's, it's good to hear that you uh, are tired too. <laughs> yeah, that, uh, Broadway Shark, tired too. No, I, I, feel I, it just feel, I feel like I'm, I, I say this, like, I feel like I'm rotting from the inside out during this time, and I feel like I'm floundering. like. I'm trying to be creative, and yes, I am teaching a little bit, and you know, hooking sure. up with you, and you know, doing these workshops. I was hoping with you guys in, per in person. Been trying to stay creative. My a girlfriend of mine wrote a show. She wrote a part for me every week. A couple wow. of weeks, we work on that, okay. and that's creative and sure. fun. Um, I started I this thing where I do Broadway uh, drive-by, where friends of mine who were by themselves early in this COVID, I'd go by and I'd bring them a Cosmo and a cupcake. Oh, you know what I mean? Like I was just so doing nice. a thousand things, yeah. walking around the reservoir. Who knew Central Park would be my saving grace? Really? Yeah, I walk, I'm out there every day. Okay. It's just great. And at the beginning, I have a little drum pad a friend let me borrow because in my, the last workshop that I did right before the shutdown, uh, this past January, February, was Some Like It Hot. And my character, Minnie, has to play the drums. So I'll just start learning, right? So I got the drum pad, I find some, you know, drum things online. It lasted about a month. And then I was like, well, first of all, Broadway ain't opening up for another year. But I should just do it. And I, I, 
it's funny because I'm not a procrastinator. That's not me. And I'm usually somebody that goes up, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And I'm just not finding that right. right. Sure. And um, I could use it as an excuse. I don't know. But I'll, it'll, I'll get, I'll get. Well, absolutely. Absolutely. But uh, have you yeah. heard of any word of anybody talking about shows coming back or when Broadway might come back or? It's just what the, the last date was end of May. Um, which I may, I don't know that that's going to be it. Right. I think it might say. be September. Right. I don't know. Like, yeah, it's I'm not an say. expert. Right. Um, but I hope that that this vaccine is right around the corner because that's going to help. That will change the game. Yeah. And it, you know, it's sort of hard because theater is probably the last thing that will come back. Right? The thing that we love and the thing that we all are, you know, feed off of is just not there. You know, like it's that, really great being on the And it's more right about, now. sometimes it's more about the audience than the, yeah. the, the actors can exactly. figure it out. It's the audience, having exactly. enough audience to make it worthwhile financially. Yeah, I guess you could figure it out. I mean, you, you got to remember, it's not just the cast. You've got a million crew. You've got the front of house, right. you know, all of, all of that. So, yeah, I guess you could figure that pod out, mm -hmm. right? But then it's the oh, it's getting the audiences in the seat and getting them to want to be in the seat. Um, because I would be nervous. Sure, sure. You know? But I, I think it'll it'll come back and it'll be strong. And you know, one of the things I miss is just that the down, you know, the I say the downbeat will come again. But one of my favorite things, being in a show or sitting in getting ready to watch a show and listening to the orchestra and do their little warm up. It just feels so good. And then when the downbeat starts. So I miss all of that. I miss watching it. I miss being in it. I miss seeing my friends do it. The last big thing I saw was Moulin Rouge and it was just, oh, delicious. You walk in the theater and it just envelops you. And I know a lot of my friends are in it. And the way it is, they, they sort of are performing as you're coming in. Okay. And it just took you in. It was like I miss that. Sure. I miss it, and I'm so happy to be sitting here. I wish you guys were here too. But I said to Ken, I'm so sorry. I'm so sick of people in their pajamas right. <laughs> and doing the zooms. That's like right. I can't wait to see. That's right. At least we're in room. Exactly. I feel like I'm on Broadway. <laughs> um, but to see it again, to see uh, just my friends working and living uh, what we love. Yeah. So I can't wait. Well, we know it's going to happen, um, hopefully sooner. Um, let me jump back to another question. All right. I know the students would ask this question. When you first moved to New York, uh, a lot of times they're worried about uh, they, they come from Northern Kentucky or Kentucky or, or, or Southern Ohio, and they're making that jump into the city, and the city feels terrifying to them. Uh, where, where did you live when you first went to the city? What did you do? Well, it sounds like you already had a job when you got to I New did. York. But where did you live? How, where do you live now and where did you live then? Well, I lived in quite a different different place in Manhattan, but I had a girlfriend that let me crash with her for a couple of days. Okay. Um, and I was terrified. I came from Orlando, you know, Disney, mm -hmm. where everything's happy and looks right. fantastic. <laughs> and 41st Street, where the Nederlander in 42nd Street did not look like it does now. Right. I was afraid to take the subway. I was nervous about it. I would get people to walk with me. I would walk sometimes from uh, the girlfriend that I had. So I stayed with a friend for a couple days. Then my friend, uh, Bernice, had uh, an extra like loft. Is so this I, in Manhattan? Manhattan, yeah. Okay. So she was on 76th Street. And then I would walk from there down to 41st Street because I was afraid to okay. take me somewhere early on. Then I got used to it. But it was, it's sure. nerve wracking, yeah. you know? Um, so I, so I did that. And then I think my first apartment I shared with two people were Rogers. That was on 71st street. Okay. Then with my first husband, I lived on 79th and West end, which I love, love, love. Then I moved to Chatham, New Jersey because I, my second husband had two children. So I have two stepchildren that I raised in Chatham, New Jersey. That's where they went to high school. And I did two, two or three Broadway shows while I was in Chatham, um, uh, catch me and big fish. I think, and Young Frankenstein, and I would commute. Okay. I got rid of my apartment on 79th Street, 
and I would commute on New Jersey Transit, and I loved that time in my life too. It was hard. Tech, tech rehearsal was always hard because it would go to like 12 or 1. Um, and I was lucky enough, catch me in Big Fish, one of the stars is Norbert Leo Butts, and yeah. he, lives, he lives in Maplewood at the time. And so he had car service to get home to let me ride with him sometime. <laughs> and I did I lived not too far from him. Right. So that was Chatham. And now I'm back on 104. Okay. Once my kids graduated from high school, we moved you're, back into You're the back in the city. Okay. Right. Wow. Um, did you ever have a time between shows where yes. you had to have something else to keep you yes. alive? But never I don't have any other skills. Let's put it that way. <laughs> This would be the time to hone in some new skills, like learn how to waitress, or you know, I don't know what else do we do, like be a bartender, or work at Sephora, or you know, whatever it is. But the problem is, instead of them meeting twenty waitresses, right. they only need three, and they're already there. So it's 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 just a catch twenty two. Sure. Maybe again an excuse. Maybe I'm making excuses. Now. Um, but uh, I did, the only things I would do were regional theater. That would be my in-between. And for me, especially when I was raising teenagers, uh, I liked being home as much as I could. I didn't want to do any mm -hmm. tours. And uh, I would do maybe two or three regional gigs in between. Would you audition for those in the city? Yep. Get them in the city and then leave the city to go uh -huh. to whatever region of the country you're in. Yep. And a couple of them, a couple of regional theaters now I've worked at several times, so they'll just offer me something. Okay. Ogunquit Playhouse is one of my favorite places to work. Um, which was, I had another crazy for you in the hopper this past, which would have been this summer. I did Irene there 12 years ago, and they asked me to do it again this summer. Well, of course, it didn't happen. Yeah. I thought I had one more crazy for you in the hopper <laughs> before I get too old. Well, <laughs> but, but yeah, but mainly, uh, yes, regional. And teaching master classes okay. and stuff like that, but I've never had a, had to do a real job. Now, had I not have my second husband, mm -hmm. there are times like before Catch Me, I had probably one of the longest stints. Maybe it was about six months that I didn't wow. work. And that's long. Well, for for me, I have to throw in a, a uh, sure. you know a regional or something. Yes. Um, but I had a husband. <laughs> and I was taking care of a house, so I was like, I was fine. You know. Okay. Uh, that was a real job. Yeah. <laughs> that was my it one real job. job. Yes. <laughs> Raising teenagers that now I'm reaping the rewards, but at that time it was treacherous. <laughs> right. And you were doing shows all the time you're raising children. Basically. Wow. And Amazing. if I wasn't, I would still go into the city to take my dead rope. Mm -hmm. Right. And do my maintain. I just had mm -hmm. to maintain. And I think that's what's helped uh, my longevity is just kind of keeping those things up, right? Okay. As I adjust myself like an old lady chair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah right? Yeah. Uh, okay, let's go back to equity. So, uh, you know, a lot, of, a lot of our students are, they hear about equity and they, they're worried that they'll end up going to New York non-equity. Did you get, uh, were you made equity at Disney? They didn't, they were not at, at that time. Yeah. Um, I literally, because I booked my first Broadway show, they made you equity. I had to pay into it. I think they took out like $50 a week from my paycheck until I paid it. Um, but I, you know, sometimes I think about this. Uh, I've talked to mm -hmm. a lot of times, like at Ogun, with I did Annie uh, last year, and uh, some of the chorus were not equity. And we discussed. How sometimes I feel like there might be some better opportunities for them at non -equity. Sure. But I don't know enough because that's not the route I right, went. Right. But I kind of I teeter on what the right thing is to do. But I do know a lot of people do their regional contracts and you make a certain amount of points, which I'm sure you teach here at NKU. Right. right. <laughs> and they make like twenty five right. points or whatever it is. Um, I think that's the greatest, a great route to go because you learn along the way, and then by the time you're equity, mm -hmm. you're like, oh, I just did, I don't know how many points you get per show, but I just did 12 regional shows. You work with different people, you watch actors. For me, watching Matthew Broderick and Nathan Lane in the room was a masterclass. So they go to these 
regional shows and they watch sure. people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Different directors. Different, different directors. Designers, the different way people directors. work. The way you know yeah. uh, you watch other people and you learn. So I feel like it's all just knowledge, knowledge, knowledge. Sure. But at the same time, I kind of feel like I don't know. Maybe you would have some more opportunities, non-equity, to to put in your bag before. What do you? Well, I think you know. Uh, back in my day, <laughs> uh, there weren't any non-equity things that were touring the country. Right. It was all equity, and maybe there was one. Now there's tons of non-equity tours of shows. Shows will finish Broadway and send out a non-equity tour, right. which is just a different world than what we grew up with. That you become equity when you get there. So, so I think I think it really depends on the person. And the route, but I think your advice is a good one to try to build up your not just your resume, but your, your kind of master class at right. different theaters before you before you commit because to that. you you might work with someone that's the prince of the lead in the show, and you know hit it off with them, and then they're doing something else, and they're like, you know what, I remember this kid, and they really. They watched and they learned and they were great on stage. They were charismatic. They showed up, and maybe there's something for them that they know. Yeah. It's all about relationships and it's all about, you know, just learning the work ethic and showing up yeah. and saying yes. Absolutely. So I feel like it's all part of it. Like I said, that it's just like my little journey, my little scrappy journey. You know, you kind of collect little things along the way yeah. that lead you to where you're supposed to be. Yeah. But you know, you just said something when you said that. I remember when Catch Me Ken went out on equity. Mm -hmm. And I remember how bad it hurt my feelings. <laughs> yeah, you know it, what I mean? It's a weird thing. So I, I don't know my stand on that. If that yeah. is just ungenerable as possible of what I just said, yeah. but I, I don't know. So. And then uh, just recently, not too long ago, equity changed the rules on how to come in, and there was a flood of young actors who didn't have to go through the same process to paying an equity. And I know that the market is kind of became saturated in a sense okay. in New York before this all happened. Um, but I think, uh, I, I definitely, I, we, we certainly know with SAG and AFTRA with the Screen Actors Guild or the com television commercial or in my world, the Writers Guild. Yeah. Um, a lot of times it's that first job that makes you, that you, you know, especially in my world of writing television, you then become writer's guild because you got the job. Yes. You can't get there any other way. Yes. So you, you in a sense, did that as well. You got the job and you made you better. And I feel like, okay, so with the prom, which was my last show, there was two or three kids literally just graduated college. Mm -hmm. Now that show lends itself to a very young sure, chorus sure. because they're supposed to be in high school. And, um, so they just literally rolled, rolled out of their pajamas right. and onto the Broadway stage. Is, you know, yeah. yeah. So, and I mean, this this whole shutdown also makes me feel for them because it's like they were just getting yes. going. You know, for someone like me, um, I like I said, I had three decades, and who knows what will happen? Who knows if I'll rev up again? I don't know what's going to happen. But it, it, you know, I'm sort of towards the end of my career. It makes it hurts my feelings so bad that they're just getting their foot wet, you know, right. and just revving up. And a lot of our prom kids went into the Mean Girls tour because it's Casey. So they're just jamming, and this happens, yeah. you know? Well, last week, we had Aaron Robinman, who was an alum of ours, who is Jesus in the national tour of Jesus. Christ. Oh, yeah. And he, he was coming back to Cincinnati when this happened. And so he had toured around the country world. Waiting to coming, come back. To his, for his family. I mean, and, and now he doesn't know when that's going to start up again. They say it will, but he doesn't know. But it's that same idea. There were a lot of people on that floor with him who were brand new yeah. to, to equity and to the world. That was their first job, um, especially some dancers in it. Yeah. And they're, they're, they're psyched. It's like there's just something in the air that you just can't catch a break. You know, yeah. the fires, the hurricanes, the deaths, the cold. It's just how much more can we take? And then to have like your. Aaron, you said it, Aaron, Aaron yeah. you know, people like that. It's just like everything's pulled out. And yeah. So I guess that's, you know, I, I don't know what, what, I just hope it all will come back full force. And well, I think we'll be more grateful because it is. Oh, absolutely. And with theater, we have the communion of the audience with live actors. Right. So if the world needs anything, when we do come back, it'll be 
connection. Yeah. After all, Absolutely. After all, the Zoom. So I think it will explode when we come back. Wait, I mean, can you just imagine like the audience muttering about, you know, in their seats before a show? Before, like, I think it's just going to be great. And then, right. like I said, we're waiting for the download. And let's just pray and hope that it's sooner than later. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Let's go um, to other technical questions for them. Um, oh, a technical Yes, yes, yes. Me and my technician. Did you start with ballet? Were you traditional, starting with ballet first and then? My learning? first love was acro. Okay. I started at the Ziegler Studio of Dance. Ziegler's daughter is my age, and she started teaching me cartwheels okay. in the other room. My sister, who's uh, a couple years older than me, was um, taking there. I was not old enough to. They wouldn't take us until five or something. So I would just go down there and play with Laura, and she'd teach me cartwheels. So acro, and then, like I said before, half hour, half hour ballet, half hour tap, half hour jazz. So I take an hour and a half. Is that every day? Oh, once, once, like once, once a week. Once a week. I was not so you think you can dance and okay. dance in that hour. Like, you know, okay. we just do stuff. But it was all a foundation mm -hmm. for me. Um, then I thought I was a gymnast for a little while. I was a cheerleader for a little while. So I kind of dabbled in everything. Where did you go to high school? Notre Dame Academy. Okay. Notre Dame. I went to Buffalo Academy. Not for my grade school. And I did do one book show in, um, in high school. Alice in Wonderland. Okay. I was a griffin. That's a bird. I was a bird <laughs> with talons and a onesie. I wasn't Alice in Wonderland. I was a bird. I wonder where Alice is now. I don't know. I hope you're out there. <laughs> <laughs> she was adorable. I remember that. But I was not Alice. Okay. All right. Um, headshots. We, back then, but, well, there was a day when we had to get those copied. <laughs> yeah. You had to go to a company in New York and they make yeah, yeah. and stuff like that. Um, when when young actors go here, uh, go to New York, should they wait to go to New York to get their headshots done in New York, or should they try to find a photographer here? Oh goodness gracious! Um, I think I did mine in Orlando. Okay. Jean jacket, gold feather earrings. Like two haircuts on one head. I did those, and then when I got to New York, I got recommendations for people. Right. And got, and nowadays, listen, the digital stuff, it's just so much better. I think you could really do it anywhere. Just something that shows you, shows your personality. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know that people or casting directors worry about, oh, well, they didn't use right. so and so. I think it's just got to be a great shot that, that shows you. Um, I, you know, but I certainly could recommend that we know. <laughs> Justin Patterson does some really great headshots in New York. Uh, we had a casting director come here several years ago, and um, I won't mention his name, but um, he went through their headshots and were pretty, he was pretty brutal uh, oh, really? as to local photographers. And um, saying that uh, there was kind of a, a New York style. Okay. But now this was several years ago. But we also then had another casting director come and she was almost, she was saying exactly what you were saying. That, uh, you know, really you can start well, you, with the yeah, headshot the casting anywhere. people's advice because right. I'm not the casting director. Right. But. That, that you can start anywhere with your headshot. And once you get there, there'll be recommendations from people who really like your talent. Yeah. And like you and say, well, hey, you need to get a new headshot. And we recommend the Try this person. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's it, it's just going to get you, you know, it, it gets you in the door. It gets, you know, they mm -hmm. see it. Then just showing up for, you know, I didn't ever have to do the open call. I mean, I guess that's not true. I got an agent that could get me into invited calls early on. And once again, through someone who I took dance class with, she recommended me for Crazy For You. So when I went to the Crazy For You audition, she said the dance captain, or sorry, he was the associate choreographer. He, Chris Peterson said, go up and say hi to him. So I went up and said hi to him in the room. I got the job, but like wow. it was through someone I took dance class sure. with, and I had and I had to give her the physical head. You know, it was yeah. the physical one back yeah. then. It wasn't like here's the, here we go digital. So uh, uh, sorry, I went off on a tangent, but I never had to do the the open call. Right. Round. 
But I think you just do those and people start seeing your face. And yeah, this is going to be a reminder, but it's not going to make or break whether you're being seen. They're going to be like, what, what are, what are your, what's your essence? What are your colors? What do you bring into the room? Show me your talent. This is just a reminder of, oh yes, that's uh, Andrew Schwab, uh, you know, whatever. Uh, but yeah, I guess whatever the casting person said, but I don't know. Being brutal about a photo is, it's just, yeah. Uh, you have, you said something earlier that um, almost all our, our guest artists have said so far, um, any success they had, they credit to the fact that they become somebody that people want to work with. Um, and I, I think I, I keep telling students that, that in our world, uh, it's about coming to class on time, showing up to yeah. class prepared, and then when you do a show on this date, treating that like it's Broadway. Um, yep. So that when you do go to New York, you, you are somebody that people want to work with, and you obviously are. I mean, uh, people call you up to work with you. Um, and uh, were you all, was that always something you knew, or was there ever a time where you, you felt like uh, you, did, you didn't behave that way? <laughs> oh, that I, wait, that I didn't behave? That you, you might have felt that you were... No, I think it's just always been who I am. And I don't know what that is from. I don't know if, sure. if it started, probably started with a little bit of my parents, probably started a little bit here where, mm -hmm. you know, people do your the costumes and, you know, I, I don't remember, we have wigs here, I can't remember, hair people. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, um, you know, I think you just learn to treat everybody kindly. Mm -hmm. And, you're right, there is something to, and, and, I'm, and I'm not trying to be like to my own horn, but when I did a work, I did a, okay, I choreographed a show at a college, at Ryder College in Princeton, New Jersey, with my friend who directed, and our friend Jerry Mitchell came and watched the performance, and he did a nice Q&A for the kids. And he said, flat out, as he'd sit next to me, he goes, I, I, and she's one of my muses, I, I always want her in the room. Cut to, once again, he only hired me for catch me. <laughs> but, if there is something I'm right for, right. he likes me in the room. Sure. And I did, he did ask me to assist on Rocky Horror Picture Show. He got to be in the room, so it was the first time I ever assisted choreograph. Um, so yeah, there is something to that. Mm -hmm. And Stro, I think the same. I think if there's anything that I'm right for, and I'm not right for everything. Listen, <laughs> I'm a specific type. Now I'm just, you know, middle-aged. It's everything, but up, up to this point, if it was something I was right for, she would ask, or Stro would ask. Uh, or uh, Jerry Rapp. And then Casey Nicola happened to, uh, I don't know, we just sort of, we were two ships that passed in the night because he was in Crazy for You. Okay. And he left. And I was in Crazy for You on Broadway. And we just weren't ever in the same shows. And then when he be, once he became a choreographer, um, I auditioned for him for Minsky's, which was a show we took to LA. It didn't come in, it didn't come to Broadway. But it was great and his numbers were great. And that's where we, I sort of fell in love with him. Uh, and the way he works. And then he asked me to do something rotten and he asked me to do prom. And that was just from that working with him right. on that time. So I think it is about work ethic. It's about showing up. One of the things Casey always says, especially to the young ones that were in prom, he said, put your phones down, watch what's happening, which is what I just said about Matthew and Nathan. I said, I watched them like a hawk. Um, I think that's a wonderful lesson because uh, you know, phones are new to our world, and yeah. uh, they don't think it is because they grew up with them. Right. But uh, we didn't when, have that at the That's right. right. When you were rehearsing and you were sitting out here waiting to come up on stage to win a rehearsal, yeah. you, know, you sat and watched uh, and watched what was going on. Yeah. Stage. Now, if you're distracted by your phone, you might miss a learning moment or what a director might say, or how to even deal with the directors and the personalities. Yeah. Uh, you might miss those moments. Yeah. I, uh, but yeah, Casey does say that to people, and then. My friend Warren Carlisle, uh, who choreographed The Sting, which we did at the Paper Mill Playhouse with um, Gary Connick Jr., he scolded someone like who was on their phone. He was like, I need somebody to do, and then they, someone was on their phone, and it was just like, okay, that was one of those moments where, and who knows if they'll hire him again, you know, wow. I don't know. But it's, it's, uh, it's interesting, because I feel like that's, where we learn, that's where you, you're hands-on learning. And yes, we they learn here mm -hmm. from you, from 
but all of those things I think build up to sure. just I don't know little things little tidbits of information that you learn from mm -hmm. others as opposed to being on your phone listen I, I'm terrible too I'll, I'll go go on my phone and 15 minutes go by and I'm like what the hell are you looking at <laughs> you know it's just like can't stop looking at it <laughs> But I made sure I put it down when when Nicola, Casey Nicola's around because he's the best. That's great. Okay. Yes, Broadway, you've done it 11 times. Yes. Has it ever lost any of its magic for you? Or is every time, every show, bring something? You know, it's funny because when it was the landline, that's when you get the call, mm -hmm. right? Now right. it's like an email. Casey wants you to do something rotten workshop, you know, it's wow. via email, yeah. you know, or whatever. But I'll tell you what doesn't change is when you are bringing the show to New York and that marquee goes up for the show. There's nothing, there's just that moment where you're like, oh, oh. when we, when the most recent one, the prom, and because he had been working on it for seven years. Wow. And I don't mean like, the entire year, right. you know, I would be, I was in something rotten and I went down to Atlanta sure. to do the out of town and, you know, well, um, there's just nothing like it. Or getting that email that says, uh, we're going, you know, this is going to Broadway, here's the dates or, you know, it's just, there's nothing like it. And it never changes. Even, you know, from in my three decades, uh, it, it still just feels just as fluttery and it feels just as joyful just as excited, if not even more so the older I get, because the more grateful I get that goes, oh, okay, I'm still doing this, you know, mm -hmm. until the pandemic. Here we are. <laughs> we, we can write that to that. Nobody's here and listen to me. Do you, um, you, you have so much problems, or at least it's, you said you don't, but you do. Uh, is, have there been times where you were scared to death? in any of this business, whether it was that did even in the Disney days, auditioning, are you ever nervous auditioning or do you, or do you put on a character and walk into the audition? Are you always you at the audition? I am an awful auditioner, awful. I never think I'm good enough. Okay. I do not have confidence. Really? <laughs> I have, have had great auditions and I've had shitty auditions. Um, I've never liked it. And that comes from this, that comes from the dancer girl. In me. Okay. And dancers, I feel like, are, I, I think, or at least I know, are perfectionists. And I feel like we're ne I'm never good enough. And so then add to it, I'm singing and acting in audition. Like I just never think, and I'm not putting on, I'm not trying to be like, whoa, it's me. It's just who I am. Uh -huh. And it depends on the part. You know what I'm saying? Sure. There are some parts where I walk in and I go, this is, I got, I, you know, yeah. like Tanya and Mamma Mia, you know what I mean? That's totally in my wheelhouse. And there's other things that people have asked me to come in for, and I'm like, I know I, this isn't my wheelhouse, but I, I just didn't want to not go. You right. know? Right. Um, I just didn't want to, yeah. Yes. Right. I didn't want to not show up. Right. And then sometimes I was mad that I didn't, I knew I wasn't right. So you just have to really know what you are, I think. Um, but then here's, let's see. I have a terrible audition story and I have a good audition story. I'll try to be quick. So I was auditioning for Face It and Sunset Boulevard and I hadn't seen the show, but I knew there was harem girls in it or something, right? I hadn't seen the show yet. So I wore a two-piece black fishnet and I knew the uh, dance, the associate choreographer, Jody Mocha, and she had told me I was gonna dance first. So I was all ready to dance in my two-piece. And she goes, she comes out in the hallway, she goes, Anne, come in, we need you to sing first. So I was like, okay, I guess I'm just gonna sing in this, right? Because I would sometimes I would bring a change of clothes. And I had a backpack that had buckles on it, it's a leather backpack. And I picked up the backpack and the buckle got caught on my fishnets. But they were waiting for me to come in the room. So I was like, I didn't want to knock on the room. And so I, I walked in the room and I'm literally like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. My, my fishnets are caught. I'm so sorry. And I was but you know, over just like an idiot. Sorry, I got too close. Uh, and uh Peter Lawrence, who was the PSM, turned to Jody Mocha and he said, who is she? Hire her. I didn't even audition that. I just wow. came in like an idiot. Now, any other day that could have been, okay. he could have been like, this, this woman's an idiot. 
but for whatever reason, there was something joyful or whatever, I just brought it sure. So I did end up singing, I sang Naughty, I pulled the scarf out of my backpack and I did Naughty Baby, and then we did a little combo. And so I ended up booking it. But like that's that to me was one of those days that was like, that was a fun, uh, that was a good audition moment. Or yeah, sometimes when you yeah, know before exactly. you leave the room that you book it. But then I had one moment where I was auditioning for a convention show. I don't even remember the name of it. I don't remember what it was. But I sat, I went in and sang. And they asked me, can you call that? That's not what I do, but like, so I go to the callback and they want to want you to do harmonies, which I'm pretty good at, you know, maybe not at then, but I'm better at now because it can be done to it. And they handed out papers and they were like, who is this in harmonies? So I'm sitting in a group of people, right? And I'm getting ready and somebody comes over and they took a piece of paper from me and they said, oh, I'm sorry, we don't need you to do this in front of everyone. And I just remember like, I felt wow. so yeah. terrible. And it was people that like, some people I knew and some and I just thought, wow, that made me feel so bad. Mm -hmm. But you do, you get knocked down, you get, you know, told no more interest a lot. You know what I mean? It's all, but then when it's great, it's really great. So sure. if there's just sure. you've yeah. got to find that thick skin, you gotta find that because mm -hmm. yeah, it doesn't feel good. It doesn't always feel good. You're not always everyone's cup of tea, but so anyway, those are my two stories. <laughs> those are good ones. Um, Robert Redford's first audition, he went in and dropped all the papers to his friends, picked them up, and couldn't get them in order. And they said, sir, you don't have to leave. But he was so charming about it, they hired him. Oh, and that was his first that's job. a good one. So I think your charm uh, was your- Maybe, that's, that's a good one. one. Yes. yes. Oh. I did a jump split and a Heil Hitler at the end of the producer's audition, because oh, you had to do your own. Button, yes. and I went jump split like that, and then I said stro. I messed up in the combo, and I said stro. I think I need it slower because we had known each other from grade three. Yeah. And she said, Angie, it's all about the button, baby. <laughs> she liked my button so much; it didn't matter what else I did. She doesn't remember that story, but I. Did. Oh, so it can be great, and it can be really, really shitty, and it's just the way it is. But was there ever times where you thought? Uh, you didn't want to keep going. Uh, you, did you ever have an injury or something that happened? Uh, I've had quite a few, but none that have taken me down okay. yet. Now you said it. Where's my wood? <laughs> Got it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, there was one time where I had a break, and I had just done, I think, the Rocky Horror Picture Show, I think, or I was, that was, yeah, might have just finished doing that with Jerry Mitchell. I wasn't in it, but I mm -hmm. heard it. And uh, I went to an agency to uh, interview to be an agent, an assistant. Okay. okay. And I went in and I chatted with, uh, I can't remember the name of the agency now. It wasn't Abrams, but it was something. And it was so many years ago. I and I talked to her and I, I said, she said, well, I, I said, I don't know that if something came across my desk as an assistant agent, you know, it would probably be a sheet of paper back then. <laughs> I don't even know right. if we had computers sure, yet. I can't sure. remember when the hell it was. And I said, I can't say it. Something came across the desk that said, tall, blonde, alto, dancer, singer, that I wouldn't go like, oh, I kind of want to do that. And she said, call me in a year. And the producers came along. Wow. Wow. So, yeah, there are times that I've tried to jump ship. Sure. Um, one of them is right now. <laughs> Anybody got a job for me? I'm a really quick learner. Just tell me what to do. Um, but yeah, there, that would be, yeah. now would probably be the biggest time. Yeah. Because I don't know what it is going to be. I'm like, should I get a real estate license? Like, should I do it? Yeah. And then things come along. Well, I, I don't even know if I'm smart enough to do that, but then things come along that sort of, I get create, you know, I just sure. get benefit for the Axel Rod Theater in New Jersey to help them. I recreated choreography for the producers in the studio. They're doing it in Japan, so we had to video. So I got to relive Ula a little bit, so that was fun. So little creative things are kind of getting yeah, wrong. Absolutely. Visiting my granddaughter in California, you know, family. So it's like things are getting me along the way, and I feel like it's going to be, it'll be a year, and I'll be like, what the hell did I do? Yeah. 
Absolutely nothing. Well, I feel but like <laughs> for me and all, all the people watching are probably thinking you'll be one of the first people to call from after hearing you speak. And I don't know about that. Oh, we think you, you don't have to worry. No, <laughs> I don't know about that. We'll see. But, you know, I hope, but it's going to be, it's going to be harder. We're trying to keep sure. everything together, but, you know, doing, doing my Deb Roche dance class in my dining room mm -hmm. is different than being on a stage. That's right. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I do wear my can can boots now, like my my heels. But there was the first two, few months I was just doing it in my socks. I was like, oh sweet, you gotta put your heels on. Because it just makes you feel right. like better, like you're performing. But it's different than doing eight shows a week. It's different, you know, so you're gonna there's gonna have to be a rev up period, I feel like for everybody. That's right, that's right. And um, I look forward to that. But yeah, I hope someone calls me. <laughs> <laughs> well. We are running out of time. Is there anything you would tell students if you remember how it felt to be on this stage and you heard a guest artist coming in and speaking to you? Is there anything you would tell them for our last moments? Well, I would just say if you are as passionate about it as, like, obviously you are, if you're showing up and this is what you're doing in this remote, crazy COVID time, you know, stick with it. Say yes to everything that comes your way. Be a sponge. Learn from anything and everybody. And um, most of all, stay grateful and kind because that's been a good way for me to keep working. Um, I also know that your generation, people are just better and fiercer and much more of a triple threat than I was ever, will ever be. And so I think it's just going to be really exciting and just stick with it. And if I had to do it all over again, I kind of wish I was a parking marker. <laughs> and maybe I should be doing learning that now. That's what I should be doing now. But I'm just not inspired and I'm trying to find inspiration. But um, that's it. Say yes, because it will. you will end up exactly where you need to be wherever that is, because I thought mine was in Orlando, in, in a house in Lake Wayne but it wasn't. <laughs> oh, did that take the that that's right. No, that's Thanks right. for listening to me babble. All right, thank you, Angie. Uh, thank you for being here today. And uh, thank you to everybody. This ends our guest artist series uh, for this first semester, and uh, we'll be starting back up uh, next year. Everybody be safe out there, and uh, Keep your fingers crossed about that vaccine. But again, thank you. Can't wait to see you in person. Yes. Someday. And uh, thank you. Bye bye.